At what point can I give up on pursuing this relationship? You know what the answer is to that? When your heavenly father gives up pursuing relationship with you. But from that point on, the Bible says that Esau hated Jacob. He hated Jacob. And he makes an oath. He says this, when our father dies and after the days of mourning are over, I am going to kill. I'm going to kill. I'm going to kill my brother Jacob. Why? 20 years go by. They're very wealthy. They're successful. But when one day, one day, God goes to Jacob, knocks on his door, and he says, Jacob, it's time to go back to your family. It's time to go home, which meant he was going to have to face his brother Esau, who had vowed to kill him. The moment of truth. Jacob is on his way to meet Esau. Esau's got 400 soldiers with him. Jacob has no idea how this thing is going to turn out. Here we come to the climax of the story. This is where you break out the tissue boxes, all right? Here we go. Look what happens. Esau got off of his high horse. He ran to meet Jacob, the one who had deceived him out of his birthright and the family blessing. And he embraced him. He threw his arms around his neck and kissed him. And they both wept. Can you picture that moment? Oh, my goodness. What a moment. So parents and grandparents, don't miss this. Another reason why we need to pursue reconciliation is for the sake of the next generation. See, something else happened in this whole story. This little Joseph who's sitting on the back of a camel watching this whole thing go down between Jacob and Esau. Little did anyone know that in a few years from now, Joseph would be kidnapped by his own brothers, thrown in a pit, left for dead, and through the providence of God, be sold as a slave into Egypt, rise to become the prime minister of Egypt. And then one day when there was a famine in the land, all of Joseph's brothers who had threw him in the pit, left him for dead, would end up at his feet because they were needing grain. And who was the distributor of the grain? Joseph. But he's grown up now. They don't recognize him. But Joseph recognizes his brother. And he had all the power in the world to either kill them or let them live. But when Joseph was a little boy sitting on the back of the camel, he witnessed, he saw his own dad go as low as he could do and bow down to his brother whom he had deceived and he had lied to and he had stole everything that was precious. And little Joseph watched his own father humble himself and reconcile. And little Joseph saw his uncle Esau get down off of his high horse and come and, and embrace him and kiss him and hug him and and 35 years later, he'd be in the same position with his brothers in front of him, and he had the choice. Am I going to kill them, kill the relationship, or am I going to reconcile? And that's when Joseph said those famous words, what man meant for evil, God meant for good. Wow. So my question to you as we close this morning, where are our children going to learn how to fix broken relationships. How about you? As a parent, as a grandparent, we have got to do better with not living with unforgiveness and, and wedges and, and different things that we've allowed through the years and we've shut off our heart. And again, I know this is a process. It's not after this sermon or overnight. It's in time that this works. But you have to first, am my, is my heart even open? Or have I shut it down? Have I closed off my heart? Who's, how do you want your own children to treat each other when they're adults and they have a falling out? Where are they going to see it modeled? God didn't give up pursuing a relationship with you. So now, he's just asking us to do for others what he's done for us. Because that's redemption. That's 
being redeemed. That's dead things coming back to life. And there's no easy answer. There's no guarantees. But at least maybe what God wants you to see this morning is allow Him to do the work in you first before you focus on what He needs to do in someone else. Amen.